us. Many things in life can destroy your life, totally. Many things. So you are going to look at the three basic things that if you are a Christian, you don't take care, it will destroy you. No matter how powerful you blow in tongues, how long you have been a Christian, if you don't take care, even either a pastor or an elder, whoever it is, if you don't take care, these three things will destroy your life. And in your academics as well, as you go to school, certain things too, like this, it, will, it can also uh, destroy your life. So you're going to learn. Amen. So that means you're going to read a lot of scriptures. How many? Only four. <laughs> Only four. I want somebody, the first person to pick Genesis 3, 6. Second person, Joshua 7, 21. Or oh, let me give it one by one. I host this. Take Genesis 3, 6. <clears throat> and Shaki will take Shaki, I've spoken too much today Comfort will take Joshua 7.21 Sister Betty will take First Kings 11.3 Put them in mind there and start opening them And the last one um, Brother Kobe You will take Isaiah chapter 14 Verse 14 Kobe, Isaiah 14, 14. Sister Betty, 1 Kings 11, 3. Uh, Sister Comfort, Joshua 7, 21. And her hostess will take Genesis 3, verse 6. Let's hear the first reading. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, reading from the Hebrew mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for, for food, mm -hmm. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm -hmm. and the tree to be desired to make one wise. Mm -hmm. She took of the fruits thereof, mm -hmm. and did eat, mm -hmm. and gave also unto her husband of her. Yeah. And he did eat. Okay. And Amen. 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 The scripture said, So when the woman saw, say the word saw, 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 what can you use to? So, eyes. your eyes. All right. The Bible says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, saw food. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eyes, and the tree is desired to make one wise. Say wise. Yes. She took of its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband. And he also ate. Before I go deeper in the story, let me tell you, let me tell you this small story. There was a man who had a son. He sent his son to go to the shop. Go to GB. Go and buy me sugar. When this boy was on his way going, he met three guys. And he gets into conversation with them. Before he realized he missed the road to go to GB, he lost. Six o'clock, 
the son is not coming home. Seven o'clock, he's not coming. Ten in the night, he's still not coming. He lost the time. So the father sent his son again, one son, to go and bring his brother back. On his way, people met him, they beat him, they tortured him, all in the sake of finding his brother back. Finally, he found a brother almost half dead and pointed him the way back home. So the junior brother just died to save the senior brother's life. So if you were the father, what would you do to the first son you sent? Because of you, your brother has been killed. And your father is staying at home. And you have to return home. So if you were the father, what would you do to the first son? I will be happy to see him back. Okay, serious. Gobi, what will you do if you were the father? You'll be angry with the first son. Because, because of you, that the son is dead. Okay. Let's talk about these three men who met the first son. Who, instead of helping him to point him to the GP, they lured this son out of the way and he lost side of where he was going. He lost the purpose of him being sent. These three men, the name of the first one, we call it Mr. Last of the Eye. Okay. The second one, Mr. Last of the Flesh. The last one is Mr. Pride. These three guys, because of them, the son died or he lost his way he couldn't even come back home so in life if you want to reach the top the top is heaven you want to go there then be careful with these three guys they are everywhere they are everywhere so the first story we read in Genesis 3 verse 6 the Bible said and when the woman saw what did he see what did she see she saw the tree the fruit was pleasing to the eye. That time, Mr. Last of the Eye was there. It was pleasing to the eye. It did not end there. And she thought that, ah, it's good for food. That's last of the flesh. Most of the time, when you eat so much, you can't even pray. When we declare fasting, you can't even fast for half a day. You always want your belly to be full. Not only eating, but also things we apply on this physical body. It's so nice. We can't let go. No matter how bad it seems like, or oh, if this one will fit me. No matter how here exposes, I don't care. It fits me. I want to feel good. Mr. Last of the flesh was there. And the last one, the Bible says in Genesis 3, 6, that it was desiring to make one wise. Anytime you think that you are wiser than everybody, you become proud. The Bible says, God said, let us make man in our own image. Satan deceived them and told them that you're going to be like God if you eat that fruit. Amen. So the woman was here, forgetting all what Adam had told her concerning God's commandment not to eat that fruit. But when she knew that it would make her wise, she went along and ate the fruit. So the question is, what happened after these three men met Adam and Eve in the garden? Yeah. They died. So pride of life, lust of the flesh, and lust of the eye, they can always kill you. Amen. Amen. Good. Today we're going to do what we call key study. Last week I told you what we call um, expository sermon, right? We use root and we expose the story. Okay? Alright. Today we are going to learn what you call. Um, I'll bring it up. <laughs> Topical sermon. So the topic is what kills us. So you're going to dive into the Bible and find three examples of people that these three men killed. Amen. The first the second reading was from was for who? First Kings? Joshua. The second is Joshua 7:21. Alright. Joshua, read it for us. <clears throat> Joshua. Joshua. Mm -hmm. Joshua 7:21. Mm -hmm. 
Joshua 7, 20, I'm reading from the King James Version. Mm -hmm. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a weight of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I converted them. I converted it. Yeah, and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of, tent, of my tent, and the silver under it. Okay, that's all. Amen. Amen. So you see, you are reading a story and you say, and when I saw the spoils, a beautiful Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and an edge, a weight of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of the tent with silver underneath it. You have read something. Who did you read about? So you remember the Bible studies we did? This is the context. So to find out who we are talking about, what do we do? We go to the pretext. Okay. So what, which verse will be the pretext? 20. All right. And Achan answered Joshua. Achan. Achan. <laughs> and Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. Okay. So you see, he put a column there, two points. So Achan said, I have sinned against God. And this is what I have done. He put a double point. Now you go to the next verse, he's going to tell you what he did. So who are we talking about here? Achan. 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 <laughs> you see now? Yeah. So Bible says it's very, very important. That's why you don't have to read the Bible anyhow. So the pretext have let us know what he's talking about in the context. Right? Mm -hmm. Then let's go to the um, protest. Pretest, <laughs> context, and what next? Post test. Let's go to the post test. Uh -huh. So Joshua sent messengers mm -hmm. and they ran onto the tent. Mm -hmm. And behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver was <coughs> there. Amen. <laughs> this story is about a man called Achan. After Israel has crossed the Red Sea, they had to. Uh, conquer the first city we call Jericho. And because that one was their first war, God said, everything that you get from the war belongs to me. We call that first fruit. Don't take anything for yourself. Everything of that war belongs to me. So they won the war, and they defeated Jericho totally. <clears throat> but this army commander called Achan, the verse 20, where he said, he saw Babylonian garment. Those Babylonian, Babylonian garments were very beautiful. Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. More beautiful than the things you buy in Zara. Ah. <laughs> very well. Nice one. So, Achan thought, wow, silver, gold, all these garments, he saw it. There are some people that when they see things, the things they see speak to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go to the shop, you find nice iPhone 10. Hmm. You saw it. I will tell you, start talking to you, come to me, come to me, come and buy me. I, I'll fit in your hands and when I'm in your hands, see the funds you get. Come to, you see, the things begin to speak to them. That's what happened to Achan. He saw the Babylonian garments and the silver and the gold, he said, ah, I won't take it. God says, I shouldn't take it. He ran away from it. The things kept calling him back. He went back to those things. It happened to us sometimes. You see things that you want them. The thing will start talking to you, like shoes. I like good shoes. You go to shop, you see the shoes, but then you talk to yourself and say, ah, what did God say about all these things? Then you even forget about God's command. You hear louder the things that speak to you more than what God has said. So Achan disobeyed God's law and took those things and ran to his tent and he hid them. He, nobody saw him doing it. Okay. And Jericho was a very big city. They defeated Jericho outright. Sometime later, they went to another war with a small village called Ai. A -I. And Israel lost that war against that small city. Say, ah, how come? Jericho very big. We are able to defeat Jericho. How much more small village like this can even attack and defeat us, Israel? 
No nation on earth can defeat Israel. Joshua went to go and, and prayed. God said, somebody among you have sinned against me. Somebody among you have done what I said you shouldn't do. So, Lord revealed that Achan did it. To the verse 20 or verse 19, Joshua went to Achan and said, Achan, give glory to the Lord your God and confess and tell me what you did. Achan said, hmm. The verse 20, during the war, I saw what did we give to this man? Mr. Last of the Eye. So, Mr. Last of the Eye was there, speaking to Achan. Go take it. This thing is going to look good on you. Look at the money. The women will sing to you, man. Go and take it. He didn't want to do it, but yet he did it anyway. So he said, show me where you hid them. And then Achan told him all the truth in the story. So they went to his tent and found those things hidden there. So Achan had to be killed. And the sad thing about this story, when you go home, finish reading it, not only Achan was killed, by the whole of his family, his wife, his children, May servant, man servant, everything about Achan was killed just because of last of the eye. Has this thing happened before? Yes. When did it happen? Nay, what you read? Adam and Eve. Eve saw the fruit. It was very lucky, appetizing, mm, what a sweet, juicy fruit. She saw it very, very lucky. She took it and ate it and they died. Achan to the same thing. He saw the Babylonian garments, all the silver and the gold. He said, wow, if I can take this. And any time you see something, Mr. Last of the Eye will be there talking to you. He can talk so loud that you can even forget what God has said. Let's bring it to the men. Chris is here. My big man has a bag there with a the gold watch on. You go to the party, we see these young girls there. Yeah, I talked yesterday, eh? You saw them. Wow. Mm. God said, that shall not fornicate. Oh, you hear that word? Then you walk away. But since Mr. Come. You. <laughs> since Mr. Last of the Eye hold, hold my back here. I want to go for a try to pull me back. Okay. Uh, that girl is nice. God is speaking to me. I need to go for it. But last of the eye is pulling me back. He will continue pulling me back until I stop. I say, hey girl, how are you? What's your name? <laughs> You know, I have iPhone. Can I get your number? <laughs> and whilst God is speaking, so you can sit down. The last of the eye will still pull you back, pull you back, pull you back until you stop and say, No. God says I shouldn't do this. No matter what I see, I have not seen anything. Walk away. But how many times do we allow these things we see to lead us back to sin against God? As a child of God, if you don't take care, the last of the eye can kill him. He killed Adam and Eve. He killed also Achan in our story. Amen? Amen. The second man that we're going to talk about is last of the flesh. This guy is found in 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 13. Who is there? First Kings chapter 11, verse 13. Oh, verse 13. Verse 13, yes. Verse 3, sorry. Verse 3. Okay. First Kings. He had 700 lines of royal and 300 concubines. Mm -hmm. And his wife lived him astray. First Kings chapter 11, verse 3. Who are we talking about? Mm -hmm. How did we know? Great things. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I intentionally jump into the middle so that you apply the pretest and the postest. Please stand up, uh, Sister Betty. We don't know who we are talking about, but the Bible says, and he had 700 wives, and it's a conjunction connecting two verses together. 
So before we can know, we have to go to the pretext. So go to the pretext. That is verse. No. The pretext of verse 3 is verse 2. Two. Okay. They were from nations about which the Lord has told the Israel. Is your Bible an NIV or King James? Uh, NIV. Okay, read from there. Let's see. You must not interrupt. No, read again from the verse 2, the first word. Verse 2. Uh -huh. They were from nations. About they were from who were they from nations? We don't know they. So let's go to the pretext again. Verse 1. Now, start from there. King Solomon. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So who are we talking about? King Solomon. Now let's hear the story. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women mm -hmm. besides Pharaoh's daughter. Mm -hmm. Moabites. Am Ammonites. Ammonites. <laughs> Edomites. 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 Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. Hittites, yeah. Verse 2. They were from nations about which the Lord has told the Israel, Israelites, you must not intermarry with them, mm -hmm. because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Solomon hid fast to them in love. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, mm -hmm. he had 700 wives of royal birth mm -hmm. and 300 concubines, mm -hmm. and his wives led him astray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So who are we talking about here? Okay. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3, and 7, verse 3, that Israelites are not allowed to intermarry foreign people or foreign nations. Most especially the Ammonites and the Moabites. Last week we learned about Moab, right? Yeah. Who did we learn from Moab? Uh, Ruth. Why God said they should not go to Moab last week? God had cursed Moab. Yeah. Who established the nation of Moab? Lot's daughter kids. Good. We know how the story came and Lot's daughter had uh, sex with their father and they began to have children, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that son uh, established the city or the nation called more. So God has disliked them. And God has already said that no nation you should marry. But this wise man, who was the wisest man in the Bible? Solomon. Solomon. Because of lust of the flesh, he ignored the fact that he was even wise. You see, anytime you allow these two men or these three men to come into your life, you always disobey God. You know, every man like a beautiful woman. It's natural. Nobody you saw uh, our president other yesterday with a wife. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I know Shaki here will never go and marry somebody who looks like Kakai with an Apache <laughs> leg like that. You'll never do that, will you? Mm -hmm. Of course you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but whenever any man sees a beautiful lady, he feels attracted. We call it the last of the flesh. You want to satisfy that 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 hunger. You want to have it. Good. And Solomon said, ah, if I am a king, I can have everything that I want. Because he was a king. Very famous and popular one. So he went into intermarried with other nations. When he go to Moab, he chose about three, four, five from there, he married them. He go to the Hittites. He go to the Ammonites. He go to the Perizzites. The Every nation around Israel, he made sure he get at least five to ten women from there. What are you going to do with them? Hmm? Do, who has a girlfriend here? <laughs> okay, let me put my glasses on. So I will not see you properly. Who has a girlfriend here? Frederick. Chris? Give me a Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, it's not it's not why well, we are learning it. Eh? Happy every name. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> Kobe. Are you sleeping? No. Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, Robert. <laughs> David, yes. you have a girlfriend? Yeah, yeah. Not yet? No. Okay. 
Eric? Yes. Maybe, what is maybe? You have or you don't have? Okay. Now, all I'm asking the Afro Shaki, I want Kam Shaki is to you. He doesn't even know what that word is. Hey! It's true. It's true. It's true. Shaki. All right. You are young. It's good to have friends. There's nothing wrong with having friends yeah. who yeah. are the opposite sex. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong with going beyond what you should do? I won't come there. We reach the guest at the last part. Hey. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you can have female friends, but don't do the things that married people do with them. The one God doesn't like. But the closer you get to them, you know that you are, you are attracted. Things come into your mind. The girl's feature and the things they possess is different from yours. Those things begin to attract you. And you touch her and say, don't touch. <laughs> and the desire will be coming in and coming in and coming in. Because that lasts with the flesh. But if you don't take her one day, one day, you're going to sleep with this girlfriend of yours and then you cause big problems for yourself. You can have one, but stay apart. Don't go too close intimately with each other. That one, that's what the Bible says you should do. Oh, okay. Let me zoom in here. You can have your friend, your friend go to with her to the McDonald's. You can eat, have fun, talk, chat. That's okay. That's okay. But when you are going to see uh, Shaki, your boyfriend, and you dress in a way that you're going to attract Shaki too much. It's not good. Dress normal. Mm -hmm. High some features. Because Shaki is not a tree. Shaki is a human being. He has feelings too. Yeah, I should talk Shaki. And Shaki too will go to gym and build a chest like that. And then uh, when she, the girl says, wow, is that for you? See that? <laughs> Six pack. And then Shaki will intentionally put that, put down and just sit like that. And then see the six pack drawing the t-shirt. I've done those things before. That's why I'm talking about that. And you, you're going to attract the woman. See, is it real? Is it act? But if a fool, and they begin to fool her, then you to begin to fool her before you realize. <laughs> see what I'm saying? <laughs> we call those things, David, come and sit here. Come and sit here, please. Before you realize. The last of the flesh has lured you to sleep with the girl, and then things begin to go mess. This man called Solomon, he should have known even better. God gave him everything on top of the wisdom he asked. He should have known that women are. Mm. Did I complete my sentence? No. <laughs> women are what? Wonderful mm. <laughs> Snakes? Well, we are special. Okay, you are special in what? In everything. Uh -huh. yeah. Including, you see that? Uh -huh. You can bring good down easily. You see that? Uh -huh. Now, God knew why he said they should not marry other people. Why? Those other nations, they were serving gods. Abosom. So if you end up marrying them, you end up serving their abosom. Yes? If Solomon, apart from marrying these men, women, and he did not went, up, he did not go ahead to serve their God, it wouldn't have been a big issue. But the same person who built a beautiful, magnificent temple for God, the same man went along building shrines and temples for the gods of these cities and nations. There's one god they call it Chemosh. Chemosh always required child sacrifice. When you give a birth to a baby, you have to go and kill the baby and put the blood on it, on that ghost. Can you imagine? Hmm. Hmm? And one of the other ghosts too, what the ghost like is to see people having sex in front of, of him, in him or in it. The ghost is in it. It's a big temple like that and the ghost will be dressed and on a stone standing somewhere. You know, do, they, they can't even do anything. And about 50 people will be naked in the temple, having sex there in the temple. Yeah. It's an abomination. And they do it. Solomon brought all those things into Israel. Somebody that God has blessed and lifted you up from that point to a kingship level, shouldn't do that. 
And the Bible says in verse uh, 20, or verse 3, that he had how many wives? 700. Mm -hmm. Even having one wife these days is not easy. Mm -hmm. He had 700. I'm not sure they, the women they knew themselves. Because how many times can you come to see him? One time in a year, two years? Because before you come to the palace, the women are there. It, it was very terrible. And apart from that, 300 concubines. Say concubine. concubine. Who is a concubine? A concubine is a woman. It can also sometimes be a man. But most of the times a woman. Who may like the man who is married. But she likes the man so much that he doesn't care that the man is married. As long as you can take care of me, it's okay with me. As long as you can give me some, you know, bare story, it's okay. Or money, it's okay. You become a concubine. You have no respect as compared to the wife. So if I'm working with my wife here on my left hand and my concubine with me, people regard my wife more than you, the concubine. Because as for you, you are there for the benefits. And these women were 300 of them. Very beautiful. Because Solomon, when you look at this one, the shape and size is different from this one. This one is tall and slim. Hmm. This one is, see? But the point is, how many can you consume in a day? He allowed the lust of the flesh to pull him back. As he was pulling me just now. Pull him back. And he did so many things that God was very angry with. So because of that, God said, you, this man, after you, there will be no nation called Israel. So from Solomon's time, the nation was kaput. Israel was no more until 1948. Yeah. The nation was divided. His own son took over and he kaput Israel totally. So Israel was dispatched to, into slavery in Babylon, into here, into here. And Adolf Hitler in the Second World War, he killed more than 6 million Jews all because of one silly mistake of Solomon. So Israel, since Solomon's time, scattered, and they came back together as a nation in 1948. You see what things can do? Last of the flesh. So as a child of God, if you don't take care, these things can destroy your life very easily. Very easily. You can be a powerful singer. You can sing. One guy will come and sit at the back there, begin to show off. You have eye contact. That's the end of your ministry. It happens. These gospel artists you see them on TV, pumping their breasts here and there. What are you doing that for? You want to lock men into them. It's, it's, no. So we the men, we have problem. Any time you are stepping out of the house, pray that God, as Job said, I've made a covenant with my eye not to look at any lustful things. The things you see, pray and then you have bought them. Amen. Amen. There's one girl who came to my driving school. I sacked her uh, eventually. This girl will come with very short skirt like that. She's from Antillian. And they are like your color. Short. Eh. And you know, when you are starting from the scratch, as uh, Connie knows, I do the gear changing for you with my left hand. And your ties are there, uncovered. You know, I'm a man, I'm not, I, I'm not a, a robot. So the first day I told her, next time when you are coming, wear jeans trousers. Okay. She wore jeans trousers and it came with a top, like your top. <coughs> All the chest here was open, he didn't have any beha on. Oh, yeah. And I can see it. I'm not a child. I did my work. The second time I told her, next time, dress properly. Otherwise, I will not drive with you. Well, I said, yeah, how you are clothed is not good. I'm a man. And now when you step to the police right now that I have touched you, I will lose my diploma and I will lose my job. I don't want to do anything of that sort. So please, dress nicely. The third time I had an appointment, you're supposed to pay me money. Please, can you come up? He stood on top of his uh, of her uh, Galarai flat, calling me to come out. I said, no, no, no. I don't do business in people's house. In my car. Oh, my baby is crying, please. Okay. I stepped out, clicking. 
I wanted to collect the money. Oh, please come in. Sit down. Uh, I said, this girl is up to something. Okay. I went in. She was wearing a dress. She went to the bedroom, came back wearing a morning coat. I said, what is this? I picked my phone as if I'm making call. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And I said, and I left. And I ran away. Because I knew this man, last of the flesh was after me. So the next appointment, she cancelled it. The next appointment, lo and behold, this one is even worse than the two previous ones. Very short. Bagam. Sit down. And that's what are you going to do today? I said, I'm going to tell you what we do today. You are going to step out of my car now. Yeah, who so? I'll be tired. I say, yeah, I know you pay. But I can't do this. Step out, there's your money, six cents. And I drove her out. Because I knew what she was after. And if I had done one thing, I would not be standing here. And those guys, they are very, very mean. Antillians, huh, they can make a police complaint against you if you don't take care, you, you will not survive. <laughs> yeah. So that's how last of the flesh works. It takes you one by one. You know, when you want to enter into the sea or the beach to swim, the front part is not deep. It's not deep. Take another step. By the time you realize it is up to here, then you are gone. <laughs> Don't try me. So that's how it is. So last of the flesh can easily lure you into a problem that you can't get yourself out and happen to Solomon. As a child of God, we should be careful. The things we see in the shops, the people we speak to, how we dance, how we move our bodies and stuff. They are sending signals out. You might think, oh, I'm just doing my this thing. It's, no, no problem. But Shaki is sitting down there. <laughs> you might think, I'm wearing my dress. I didn't buy it to seduce nobody. Don't forget, men are around. Shaki is around. Mm -hmm. can be. <laughs> Kobe is also there. You understand? So if you are dressing, dress in such a way that you don't cause problem to nobody. Amen. Amen. And the last one we are going to take is from Isaiah 14.14. 14. Who is there for us? Who was supposed to read Isaiah? Kobe. Yeah. Isaiah 14.14 14 was yours. Please. Stand up and read. Isaiah 14.14. Noah. Are you, are you talking about Isaiah? Sorry. Isaiah 14, 14. King James Version. Yes. Um, I will you. ascend um, above. Stand properly. Stand like a man. Mm -hmm. I will ascend um, above the highest of the cloud. And I will be like the most high i will ascend above the highest of the clouds i will be like the most high yeah. can you ascend above the clouds no can you be like the most high so who are you talking about god eh? <laughs> satan pray you don't know pray so what do you do pretext <laughs> go to the pretext it's satan. so if your verse is verse 14 which is your pretext Verse 13, okay. Let's listen. Um, for those heads said in the name. Oh, my granny, oh, my granny, oh, my granny. Read like a man. Come on. <clears throat> uh, verse 13. Uh -huh. For those heads said in the name. <laughs> He's reading really from the. <laughs> Who is there? Sorry? Yeah. 14. Um, but 14 um, verse 14, 13. Uh -huh. Okay, 13. What does 13 say? Chapter 13. Of no, verse 13. Uh, we are reading Isaiah 14, 13. Uh -huh. for, <coughs> verse 13. For those he said into the ten hand, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt, exalt my throne above the star of God. Mm -hmm. I will set 
also upon the mountains of con congregations in the sight of the north. Mm -hmm. okay. So you said, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I, I, I. Is it you? No. no. Who? We don't know. Yeah. Pretext. So which pretext are you, you going to take now? Um, twelve. Thank you. Let's go. How, uh, verse twelve. Uh -huh. How art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. So who are we talking about? Lucifer. See that? Please sit down. So anytime you pick up a Bible and a verse is given, don't just say the word. It's like eating bread. You're taking bread from the inside. No. Always take the bread from the corner portion. So I read from the verse 12. He said, How are you fallen from heaven? And also for your advice, um, Kobe, download the new King James. Because the thou and the thine and the do is confusing you. Mm -hmm. The new King James is better. Uh -huh. That's how mine sounds. Listen. Oh, how have you fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning? For you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of congregation, on the farthest east of the north. I will ascend above the highest of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. Who is talking here? Mm. Satan, Lucifer. You know, I was one particularly using one word and I was shouting. Which word did I use and I was shouting? Mm. I. Good. Satan wants to be like God. I want to ascend. I, competition. I is never satisfied. Anytime you want to use the word I, I, I all the time, you begin to behave like Satan. Spell the word sin. What is in the center? Sin. I. Satan later as I told you the other day. Satan always wants to portray himself like God. In any society that you find yourself in, I want to be like this person. So you the women. You watch the TV, you watch the things on the Facebook, you see somebody singing an artist, her hair is like that. I want to look like Beyonce. I wish I, wish I was uh, uh, Dana Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I wish I that, I that. So you begin to dress like the person. It happens. Lady Gaga, you want to be like her. Role model. <laughs> Role model. You see that? Uh, she will say, if you want to put a ring on it, put it in the end and it end. Uh -huh. <laughs> so usually you go to town and buy a ring on it, and they put a ring on it, you give it to yourself. You want to to be like somebody. You know why most people... Sorry, I'm here. Finish? Okay. You know why most people have difficulty in getting married these days? <coughs> it has nothing to do with Mama Wata. It has nothing to do with the witchcraft in their family. It has to do with the eye spirit. Pride of life. That's what Satan is, Mr. Pride of life. You hear Beyonce singing. If you want to be, go and put a ring on it. And you go to the top a shop, you buy a 10 euro ring and you put it on it. When men are passing by, they look at your finger, oh, he's married already. And they pass away. The man see you wearing the ring on it. Because Beyonce says you should put a ring on it and be like Beyonce, the man will pass by. Maybe that very instant, Shaki passed by and so he wore a ring. Shaki was your man that day. Oh. <laughs> he watched you wearing the ring and he passed. <laughs> and that is all. You never meet Shaki again, no way. <laughs> and now you are of age. You want a man to marry. <laughs> now you are praying. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the song you are hearing and what you put on it. <laughs> you see that? People who always want to use I, Satan said, I will, what? he said, I will be like. Anytime you want to be like somebody, you become a copycat. You are not the real one. You are copying somebody's lifestyle. Sorry? Yeah. So let me, let me ask you. You and the original one, who is unnecessary? You. 
You. You are the fake one. So be yourself. Satan said, I will exalt Abel. He wants to be higher than somebody. Me standing here, I'm not a president. I'm the elder. I don't want to be like him. It is his duty. And I have to then go and talk concern, go and say this about him so that they will remove him and put me there. No, I won't do that. And what I am doing, he cannot do. I am unique in my oneness. There's no other person at Andrews like me on this earth. I am unique. That's how you are. So if you value who you are, you will never want to be like somebody else. You see that? Secondly, whenever you are with people, don't let them, don't bring yourself out. Hey, I am here. Hey, haven't you seen me? Hey, hey, I, always, I, 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 who are you? We don't know you. Yesterday's program, I went, I sit at the back. I would have walked already to pastor and say, Pastor, I'm here, let me start my job. And I said, no. I must sit down for them to ask me to do it before I go and take the microphone. Not because I can do it, so I am here. If I do that, I will be calling things for myself. So as a child of God, always wait for your turn. Don't put yourself always first. No. Satan did the same thing. That's why the Bible says he was cast down. So, our prayer test, verse 12, said, How have you fallen, O oh, son of the morning? You were cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nation. Why was he cut down? Because he said in his heart, I will ascend. I will be the top. You have been sent to school to learn economics. You will find yourself, you find that uh, Air Hostess is now reading um, tourism, tourism, to become an Air Hostess. Hey, I want to be like that one. Ah! Why should I do economics and stay at the shop? I want to do tourism. And you put your economics books aside, learning tourism. Meanwhile, I don't even know what a flea tag is. Mm. End of the day, you spoil everything. So always be unique in your own corner. Satan said again, I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. Exalt means, oh my own own soul. No, you are a dickness. You are not a pastor's wife. Be there in your corner. I am a, I'm not a pastor. I have to be there. Don't, my host, no, 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 no. The Bible says he will bring you down. So humility is a lesson here. Always humble yourself until you have been lifted up. Pride is not good. What the Satan said again, I will also sit. I will sit also. 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 Ah, Shaki is a doctor. I will also be a doctor. What did this guy know that he became a doctor? Okay. Uh, no, no more auto technique. Well, I also want to be like that. And you begin to run other people's race. You were not born to be a doctor. You were born to be a mechanic. Steady in your field. Yeah. It's good to be motivated. I'm not saying that. But don't do it because somebody else is doing it. Ah, presiding married. How old is he? Ah, this girl, uh, the wife is Francesca. Yeah. Ah, she was my classmate. How come she married yesterday? And me not. I was also married. Mm -hmm. And then you find Christian beating the drums. And she'll come and do this like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that Christian will notice her. I'm calling them because you are talking. Mm -hmm. And Christian will notice her. And I say, oh, Araba, how are you? Araba, you look good with your shoes, Araba. Oh, you didn't you know my shoes is from Zara, Araba? Nice. Araba will do whatever we can so that Chris will marry her in a year's time. And two years, phew. Why? Because she also wants to get married. So if you were a child of God, remove the word, I also, I also, from the vocabulary. To not help you. Am I going somewhere? Okay. The last point. Let me close. He said, I will also sit in the mount of the congregation on the farthest east of the north. He's even showing you where he wants to sit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a gathering, even though you have you on the list to be called, mm -hmm. sit down somewhere. Let them call you. Yesterday, I entered. I was telling the ladies, okay, I know what I'm supposed to. I didn't go and sit down. I went and sit at the back until the guy called the list. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. and we walk in it. That's how it is.
Don't always go to power uh, 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 match up the highest position. Uh, please stand up. Somebody else says there. Oh. Then now you are coming. With, uh, it's a shame, right? Yeah. That's how Satan is. If you have that spirit, you have the Satan spirit. You remove it. You call it pride. Pride is not God. Amen. Amen. So if you want to ascend to heaven, live a godly life as Christ led. The three men you should be careful of is Mr. The last of the I. Those are the people, everything they see, those things speak to them. Number two, Mr. The last of the flesh. This one is no 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 no. And the last one is Mr. Pride of Life. Always make sure you humble yourself at any point, at any place. And the right time, God will bring the best person along your life. May the Lord bless you today. Amen. May He let whatever that you have learned today be in your heart. Till Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Time for question. Any question from anywhere? From what we learned? I didn't preach at all. Questions? Or else I'll ask you a question. Okay. Yes. Please, about, about the downfalls of some men. Mm -hmm. It's not only a. Um, um, how do I put it? It's like, it's not 